My name is Brittany Piersma. I work for Audubon Western Everglades as their field biologist. Today we're going to be talking about the burying owls of Southwest Florida. So I started working for Audubon Western Everglades as a shorebird biologist, um, and then I started also working with gopher tortoises and now burying owls. I've worked with them for about three years now. With the burying owl program, um, we actually have the second largest population of burying owls in the state behind Cape Coral. Uh, so that being said, there weren't always burying owls on Marco Island. Originally, we think that there was a small population, but when they started to show up in the 70s and the 80s, there was a lot of people that were concerned, wanted to protect them. And then once Nancy Ritchie started as a city environmentalist, she started an owl prowl program that really started going around and making sure that the burrows and the owls were kept safe. Eventually, uh, as she continued throughout the city and had more jobs, Audubon Western Everglades took over with two main volunteers, Jean Hall and Carol Tennis. And this program grew and grew as the population grew. And now we have about 86 volunteers that are monitoring about 300 to 400 sites on the island, um, as well as myself. And we are also monitoring the starter burrows around the island. So one of the reasons that we are banding these owls is to track their movements, especially with this increased development. Anyone nearby that wants to help host a burying owl living in their front yard, we have a starter burrow program. It's linked with ourselves, um, Audubon Western Everglades, the city of Marco Island, and Florida Fish and Wildlife. So we can dig the start of a burrow in your front yard if you're willing to draw in a threatened species uh, to be able to nest in your front yard and provide them habitat. And there are incentives with that program as well. So on average, for the last couple of years, we've had about 250 pairs of burying owls on the island that produce about 400 to 500 chicks that are fledged. Um, so that number, only about a third of those chicks we think are making it to the next season to nest. So typically we have about 300 to 400 sites right now. As those are being removed, we have about 120 starter burrows on the island that we're trying to make up for the loss of habitat. The best way to attract burrowing owls is to do it under our program because we have a fancy way of creating a burrow that's most enticing to them. Uh, we can give you advice on how to attract and draw in these owls with nice fresh sand. Um, the shovel we use is a spade shovel so we really make it look like it is a burrow in your front yard. It's just a start, it's only about six inches down. Um, yes, that perch does draw them in, but there are, of course are also incentives with the program and it's also good for us to be aware where these owls are on the island. So if you're a part of the program then we can help monitor and know where they're ending up and where they're nesting. The biggest threats that these owls face right now are of course, lack of habitat, but along with that, in an increasingly urban area, they're facing car strikes um, and rat poison. Those are really our biggest threats. They do have natural predators, so of course they have hawks, um, mammalian predators. People letting out their indoor cats um, and, and allowing them to roam yards can also be a threat to them as well. Um, but car strikes, rat poison has been the biggest issue. There's a lot of alternatives to use other than rat poison. So you can use CO2, good nature traps. You can also use something called contrapest. Within your home, you can use snap traps. So a lot of different variety of options you can use instead. These tiny little owls are going to be eating those rats that eat that poison, so you're not just killing the rats. Um, and we've been doing a lot more research on that, collecting samples and testing the high levels that they have within their bodies. So if you come across an injured, sick, um, or unresponsive burying owl, um, there's two people you can contact. Number one would be the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. They're our local rehab in Naples, um, and they work very closely with us. Uh, we do have a lot of local volunteers and myself on the island, so you can email us at owlwatchmarco at gmail.com. That email is watched 24 seven. Anyone that emails that will get an immediate call to know where it's located, how we can help out and transport that owl as quickly as we can to the Conservancy. So the majority of these owls are located on private property. Uh, we do have a couple locations that are within city properties uh, that the public can come view, um, but it's important to realize that they are private properties so you're not entering them, but also to give space to these owls. During the nesting season, we don't want to distract the parents from protecting their young uh, and lead them at risk to any predators that are going to swoop in and take those chicks away. Uh, we also want to lessen the stress so they can focus on what they're doing. Um, in a lot of these locations, it's best to just stay on the sidewalk or 
street and bring binoculars so you can view their behaviors naturally. I mean, you're going to see a lot more uh, if you give them plenty of space uh, and, and keep them safe and protected. Thank you for tuning in. To discover more about the fascinating creatures inhabiting Marco Island, feel free to browse through our other videos or contact us to schedule a tour.